Hello, second grade, and welcome to Unit 5, Week 4. We're almost done with Unit 5. We're going to get started with our vocabulary words today. Our first vocabulary word is the word curious. So if you're curious about something, you have questions about it, you want to learn more about it, it's something that's interesting to you. Next, we have the word distance. If something is at a distance from you, it's far away from you. So when we're talking about distance, we're talking about how far away something is. Next, we have the word enormous. Enormous means very large or very big. So something that's huge or really big, we can describe it by saying it's enormous. Our next word is the word gently. So if you do something gently, you do it in a way that is very soft and light, you're not being rough, you're not trying to do it really quickly, you're being very gentle. So think about uh, when someone's carrying a baby, right? They're being very gentle, they're being very soft, they're not moving around quickly. Next, we have the word proudly. So if you do something proudly, you do it in a way that shows that you're really happy with yourself or you're pleased with what you've done. You're proud of it. Next is the word rarely. So when something happens rarely, it doesn't happen very often. It's not like something that happens every day. Maybe it's something that happens once every couple of months or once every once a year. So something that is rare, that means there's not a lot of it. So if something happens rarely, it doesn't happen very often at all. Our next one is earth resources. So earth resources are things that we find in nature. There are things that are already there. We're not making them. So water, trees, sunlight, these are all resources. They're earth resources. They're natural resources that come from the earth. And our last word is the word supply. Supply is how much of something you have that's available for you to use right now. So I have a supply of pencils in the class. Maybe I have a pack of 50 pencils. That's my supply. So that means anytime I need it, those 50 pencils are there for me to use. Now our spelling words for this week are going to be more variant vowels, sounds, and we're going to be working with the sound aw. So you can make aw with just the letter A or A-W or A-U or A-U-G-H, or A-L, or O-U-G-H. And you'll see that, you'll see these letters as we go through our spelling words. So we have the word ball, small, paw, jaw, pause, sauce, taut, chalk, walk, sought, new, fruit, city, own, and read. So in the words ball and small, we're seeing the A by itself making that sound. In paw and jaw, we're seeing A-W. For paws and sauce, we're seeing A-U. For taut, we're seeing the A-U-G-H combination. For chalk and walk, we're seeing that A-L. For sought, we're seeing that O-U combination. So those are or sorry, the O-U-G-H combination. And those are all different ways to make that sound ah, that variant vowel sound. Now for our ELA and grammar notes this week, we're going to be working on things called homophones. Now the word homophones is made up of two root words, two parts. Homo means the same and phone means sound. So homophones are words that have the, or that make the same sound, but just because they make the same sound, that doesn't mean that we spell them the same. So homophones are words that sound the same, but they're not spelled the same. And we're going to go over some words that are confused with each other sometimes because they sound the same, but the different spellings mean they have a different meaning also. So some of the homophones that we're going to talk about today, the first one is the word there. So T-H-E-I-R, T-H-E-R-E -E or T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E, all three of these words, we pronounce them there. But depending on the way they're spelled, they have a different meaning. So we're going to take a look at each one. And I tried to put in some fun pictures for you guys to help you remember what they mean. So T-H-E-I-R is a possessive. That means it's showing that something belongs to someone. So think of that I, 
So that little I in the word there as a little person. So this is their house. So it belongs to that little person. Next, we have the word T-H-E-R-E, -E, there. And that's talking about a place. Like when I say, please sit over there or their house is over there. Now, the biggest clue that we have over here is the word here, we can find it in the word there. So T, the H-E-R-E, -E, so here and there, it helps you remember that that's, we're talking about a place. And in our fun little picture, you can imagine that that R is pointing somewhere. So it's pointing over there. And last we have T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E, and this is a contraction. This is what we get when we put the words they and are together. We get the word there. So they on the trip, they are coming with us on the trip. And a fun way to remember it is take a look at that apostrophe and think of it like a tiny letter A that's sitting on top. And it'll help you remember that this means they are. So make sure you're using the correct one when you're writing. Remember, if it has the I in it, it's talking about something that belongs to somebody. If it has the word here in it, like T-H-E-R-E, -E, we're talking about a place. And if it has an apostrophe R-E, -E, we know that it's a contraction. That means they are. Next, we have the word to. So two, two, and two. T-O means in the direction of something. So I am going to the store that has one O. I'm going to the store. If it has two O's, that means a lot, or it means also. If I say, I am too tired, that means I'm really, really tired. Or if I say, I want to play two, that means I want to play also. So two O's means a lot or also. And then we have T-W-O, which means the number two. So this is how we spell the number two. Like I can say, I have two pencils on my desk. And then we have the diagrams over here to help you with those. Next, we have your and your. So again, anytime we're seeing an apostrophe in a word, we know we're talking about a contraction. So apostrophe R-E, we know that's, that's what we get when we add R to a word. So your, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is a contraction of the words you plus R makes your. And if you're not sure, try and substitute or say you are instead. If it makes sense, then you know you're using the right one. If it doesn't make sense, that means you're using the wrong one. So you are a great friend. I can say you are a great friend. That makes sense. Or I hope you are coming with us on the trip. That also makes sense. We use that apostrophe R-E. So just like we did up at the top with they are, imagine that little, that apostrophe is a little a, and you know that that's the, they're talking about the word are. Or we have your, Y-O-U-R, which is another possessive. It means it shows ownership. It means something belongs to somebody. This is your backpack. Please put your shoes on. I found your pencil. So over here, we can't substitute you are because it won't make sense anymore. I can't say, is this you are backpack, right? That doesn't make sense. So I know that it's not going to be the contraction that I'm talking about. It's going to be the one that's just Y-O-U-R that shows ownership. It shows that you own something or something belongs to you. So this is your backpack put on your shoes. Next we have it's and it's. So I-T-S by itself or I-T apostrophe S. Now I-T-S by itself is another possessive. It shows that something is owned by someone or something. So I can say this is its toy or the puppy hid its bone. So I-T-S by itself means something belongs to that person or that thing, it belongs to that noun. Or if I have I-T apostrophe S over here, we know this is a contraction. It's what you get when you put together it is or it has. So it's, it's going to be cold later this week, or you can say it is going to be cold later this week. Remember, when you're not sure, substitute the word uh, when it's pulled apart. So you can figure out, are you using the contraction form or are you using a different form? Or it's been a long time since we saw this movie. It has been a long time since we saw this movie. So remember, if it's got that apostrophe, you know it's taking the place of some letters. 
Now, some other ones that we have that are words that are commonly confused or words that people sometimes put the wrong one because they sound the same, right? They're homophones, but they're not sure if they're spelling it the right way. So we have the word through and through. So T-H-R-E-W is the past tense of the word throw, which means you're tossing something. He threw the ball to his friend as they played catch. Or I threw my grape up in the air before I caught it in my mouth. Then we have the word through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, which means to pass inside something or to go from one side of something to the other side. So I can say we drove through the long tunnel. This is a different meaning. Next, we have the words weak and weak. W-E-E-K is a noun that's talking about the seven days in our week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can say next week, we'll be going to visit the new library. We also have the word weak, W-E-A-K, which is the opposite or the antonym for strong. So weak means someone or something that is not strong. I can say, when I had the flu last month, my body felt very tired and weak, right? I didn't feel strong. I was very sleepy. Maybe I was kind of achy. So W-E-A-K is the opposite or the antonym of strong. Next, we have the word made and made. M-A-I-D is used to describe someone who is a helper. They help to keep things clean and tidy. They help to take care of things around a home. Or there's M-A-D-E, which is a past tense of the word make, which means to create something. You can say, I made chocolate chip cookies. Or when we were at the beach last week, we made a sand castle. So M-A-D-E means to create or make something. M-A-I-D is someone who is a helper that helps to keep things clean and tidy. Now we're also going to talk about contractions. So last week we talked about contractions with the word not. Remember a contraction is when we're combining two words together to make one smaller word. And what usually happens is the first word will stay exactly the same. And the second word is going to be the word that gets shortened. And we're going to use an apostrophe in the place of missing letters that were taken out of that word. Now remember when we're adding the word not to a word when we're making a contraction, that O gets replaced with the apostrophe. Remember, the apostrophe looks like a little comma, but it's on top. So N apostrophe T. So do not becomes don't, did not becomes didn't, is not becomes isn't, cannot becomes can't, will not becomes won't, should not becomes shouldn't. Now the ones we're going to talk about today are contractions with the word am, contractions with the word is, and contractions with the word are. So we only add am to I. So I am becomes I'm. So when I'm adding am, instead of the A, I'm going to take out the A and put an apostrophe in its place and then keep the M. So I am becomes I apostrophe M, like I'm going to the store. Now, when we're adding is to a word, we're going to take out that I and we're going to put an apostrophe in its place. So is is going to become apostrophe s. So he is becomes he's, H-E apostrophe s. She is becomes she's, S-H-E apostrophe s. Now we've already talked about contractions with the word are when we were talking about our homophones on top. When we, have, when we add the word are, we're taking out the A, we're putting an apostrophe in its place, and then we're adding R-E. So contractions with the word are, have an apostrophe RE at the end. So we are becomes we're, you are becomes your, they are becomes their. So this is remember what you get when you put a word plus the word are. Now, some things to remember. Homophones, remember, are words that sound alike but have a different spelling and meaning. Possessive pronouns, are words that show ownership and they take the place of a possessive noun to show that something belongs to that person or that thing. Contractions, which is what we just talked about, are when we take two words and we combine them or we put them together to make one shorter word and we use an apostrophe to take the place of the missing letters. But one thing you may not have noticed 
is that some pronouns and contractions are also homophones. So let's go and take a look at those. So contractions, the biggest clue you want to think about is the apostrophe. That's going to be your biggest clue. Contractions use apostrophes. Pronouns do not use apostrophes. And these are specifically possessive pronouns, not just any pronouns. Possessive pronouns do not have an apostrophe in them. Contractions do have an apostrophe. So it is, it's, and it's, I-T-S itself or it apostrophe s those are homophones you say them the same way they're both pronounced it's but when it has an apostrophe in it we know it's a contraction right it means that we're putting together the word it plus is but if it's just spelled its we know that we're talking about something that belongs to it so this is its toy uh the dog hid the bone in its house we're talking about ownership Next, we have your and your. So these are ones that we talked about above when we were talking about homophones. If it has that apostrophe RE, we know that it's adding the word R to it. So it's a combination of you, R. But if it's spelled Y-O-U-R by itself with nothing else, then you know that we're talking about something that belongs to you. So this is your book. Uh, can I ride on your bike? Uh, we went to your house last week. We're talking about something that belongs to you. Next, we have there and there. So this is two out of the three that we talked about above. T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E is the combination of they plus R. So they are going to the park with us. And we can say it, they are going to the park with us. And since that makes sense, we know we're using the right one. T-H-E-I-R is a possessive pronoun. We're talking about something that belongs to them. So this is their house. I got to ride in their car. Or we went to, uh, we got to swim in their swimming pool during the summer. T-H-E-I-R means there's, it's owned by somebody, something that belongs to them. T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E is a combination or we're putting together the words they are. So those are going to be your notes for this week. Please do come back and take a look at the notes or rewatch the video uh, so that you get more information here and so that you can refresh your memory. I know there was a lot of information in our notes today, so I do encourage you to make sure to come back and look at them. So let's take a look at our stories for this week. We're going to start with our literature anthology book and we're going to be reading a story called The Woodcutter's Gift. So pay attention to our vocabulary words. They're the ones that are going to be highlighted in yellow as we go along. And this is a fiction story. So remember, fiction means it's a story that's made up. It's not real. Genre, fiction, The Woodcutter's Gift by Lupe Ruiz Flores. Illustrations by Elaine Jerome. Essential question. How can we protect the earth? Read about a woodcutter who puts a tree to good use. On a stormy night, a violent thunderstorm blew in and knocked down the giant mesquite tree that stood in the town square. After the storm, all the neighbors, who rarely spoke to each other, came out of their houses and gathered around the enormous tree that was blocking the main street. That tree is dead. Let's get rid of it, remarked the storekeeper as he poked at it with a stick. He looked up to see what the others thought. The crowd muttered in agreement. Yeah, said the house painter. I'll bring my saw and cut it into little pieces. No, wait, the gardener said. Let's ask the woodcutter Tomas what he thinks we should do. Tomas, said the gardener. What should we do with this tree? This rough and ugly mesquite is only good for one thing, firewood, said the grumpy painter. No, no, the woodcutter said, moving closer to the tree. Don't destroy this good tree. What are you going to do with it, the crowd asked. The woodcutter paused, deep in thought. This tree could belong to everyone. 
How can one tree belong to everyone? Not possible. The woodcutter just grinned and replied, It's a surprise. You'll see. Stop and check. Make predictions. What do you think the woodcutter's surprise will be? Use the make predictions strategy to predict what he will do. The next day, the neighbors watched from a distance as the woodcutter split the tree into huge blocks. Then the men helped him haul the large pieces to his home. Day after day, the townspeople watched as wood chips flew into the air like sparks from a fire as the woodcutter carved and chipped and whittled the wood. My dad says that ugly mesquite is only good for barbecues, one young boy said as he watched from the other side of the fence. Ah, oh, but he's wrong, the woodcutter replied. The beauty of this tree is not on the outside, but on the inside. Every day, the curious neighbors went to watch the woodcutter work. They talked and laughed and wondered what he was doing. What are you making? They kept asking him. Be patient, he would say, and continue with his work. One day, the woodcutter moved the chunks of wood inside his woodshed. Children peeked through the knot holes in the wall, but they couldn't see anything. The woodcutter worked every day until the sun went down, and every night he locked the shed. Finally, the woodcutter rang the big rusty bell hanging on his porch. He had never done that before. Clang, clang, clang. Everyone rushed over and gathered outside the woodcutter's house. What's happening? Why is the bell ringing? They asked. Follow me, the woodcutter said, and he led them to the woodshed. Now close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you. The big woodshed door swung open. Creak. Open your eyes now, the woodcutter said with joy. The townspeople opened their eyes and gasped. You see, I made a zoo for the children to enjoy, the woodcutter said proudly. Life-sized wooden animals stood before them inside the shed. Wow, yeah, hooray, the children shouted as they jumped up and down with excitement. This is a giraffe, squealed one little girl in delight as she stroked the giraffe's long neck. And there's a zebra over there, said another girl. Look, a lion and a tiger, one boy said as he ran his hand across the lion's mane. A turtle, a little girl cheered as she counted the squares on the turtle's shell. Even the painter couldn't believe his eyes. Tomas created a spectacular zoo from that dried up old mesquite tree. Stop and check. Summarize. What did the woodcutter do to make the zoo? Summarize how he made the tree into his surprise. Everyone helped carry the animals one by one to the town square. These animals still need a coat of paint, the woodcutter said. They're not finished yet. Can we paint them? The children begged as they circled around the woodcutter. Of course, he replied, scratching his head, as soon as I get some paint. Wait, we'll get the paint, said the neighbors rushing home. They returned with an odd assortment of leftover paint and paintbrushes. Everyone gathered in the square to paint the animals. When they finally finished, they giggled at the orange giraffe with the brown spots, cherry red lips, long black eyelashes, and bright blue hooves. They laughed at the turtle with the pink and green squares on its shell. They pointed to the yellow and purple stripes on the zebra. I couldn't have done a better job myself, said the woodcutter, smiling. To celebrate, the townspeople had a big party in the square. The adults watched the children play in the zoo. They painted brightly colored booths 
and decorated them with giant paper flowers in red, blue, green, yellow, and purple. Everyone enjoyed snow cones in rainbow colors. A few days later, men dressed in suits and ties came to talk to the woodcutter. The curious neighbors gathered outside his house. A short while later, the woodcutter came out and addressed the crowd. These gentlemen from the city want to buy the zoo for the museum. They say it's a work of art, he said, smiling sheepishly. Tomas had never thought of himself as an artist. Everyone was quiet. Then a little boy asked sadly, Does that mean we'll lose our zoo? The children were ready to cry. Would their zoo be taken away? The woodcutter looked at the crowd. Look at how our zoo has brought us all together, he told the men in suits. The zoo belongs here. It's not for sale. But I will donate one piece to the museum so others can enjoy it too. All the people cheered. The children jumped up and down. Everyone formed a circle around the woodcutter. They celebrated. They danced. By the time it got dark, everyone was exhausted. That night, the children slept so soundly that they did not see Mr. Giraffe stretch his long neck and snap a leaf from the tree. They did not catch Mr. Lion's curly mane blowing gently in the breeze as he yawned. They missed seeing Mr. Zebra's purple and yellow stripes swirl as he pranced around the yard, and no one saw Mr. Tiger's tail swish back and forth as he swatted a fly. No, no one saw the special magic that filled the air that night. They were just happy knowing that the woodcutter's gift would still be there in the morning. All right, that takes us to the end of our story in our literature anthology book. <clears throat> we're going to read the short expository text that comes right after it called Earth's Resources, and then we're going to jump into our Readers and Writers Workshop. Genre Expository Text Compare Texts Read about rock and mineral resources and how we can protect them. Earth's Resources What is above? below and all around earth earth resources go outdoors you'll feel a gentle breeze move across your face or a strong wind blow look below you are stepping on soil and rocks listen for the gush of a gentle stream or the thunder of ocean waves earth resources are materials from earth that people use in daily life air wind Water, rocks, and soil are all natural resources. We use them every day. Rocks and Minerals Rocks and minerals are everywhere. Look for them in the ground, sand, water, or ice. Rocks can be big or little, rough or smooth. Have you seen a rock that sparkled? Some rocks shine because of the minerals they contain. Like rocks, minerals are not alive. Minerals can be different shapes, sizes, and colors. As rocks and minerals break down, they form soil. Here are how some rocks and minerals look and feel. Rocks and minerals. Igneous rocks. Basalt. Basalt is dark black. Sometimes it has gas bubbles inside. Sedimentary rocks. Shale. Shale can be black, red, brown, or blue. When it is wet, it smells like mud. Metamorphic rocks. Marble. Marble is a smooth, multicolored rock. Sometimes it has shiny crystals. Minerals. Quartz. Quartz is a hard mineral. It looks like glass.
We use rocks and minerals in many ways. We use granite to make buildings and monuments. We also use it in our kitchens to make countertops. We make statues out of marble. Many rocks are used to make tools. Minerals are used to make everything from our food to our cars. Minerals we use. Amount used in a person's lifetime. Iron. Pans. Bikes. Computers. Clay. Dishes. Bricks. Books. Shampoo. Salt. Food. Saving our resources. We have a good supply of some natural resources. The earth replaces air and water quickly when we use them up. The earth does not make more rocks and minerals as quickly. We can keep a good supply of earth resources by reusing things we have. We can recycle things we no longer need. These things help people reduce pollution and keep natural resources like water and soil clean. If people work together, Earth's resources will be here for everyone to use for a long time. Saving our resources. We have a good supply of some natural resources. The earth replaces air and water quickly when we use them up. The earth does not make more rocks and minerals as quickly. We can keep a good supply of earth resources by reusing things we have. We can recycle things we no longer need. These things help people reduce pollution and keep natural resources like water and soil clean. If people work together, Earth's resources will be here for everyone to use for a long time. Okay, so now that we've finished up this one, we're going to hop into our Reader's Narrative Workshop, and we're going to read another fictional story, and this one is called The Art Project. The Art Project. The Art Project. Essential Question. How can we protect the Earth? Read to find out about saving Earth's resources. Look! The community center is having an art contest, said Grace. She was holding a flyer. Mrs. Simon read the flyer aloud. Everyone agreed they would like to enter the art contest. Mrs. Simon said, Our classroom supply of art materials is low because it's the end of the year. I'll check with Mrs. Rice to see what she has. Mrs. Rice, the art teacher, didn't have any art materials. I won't be getting a supply until next year, she said. The whole class was disappointed. How can we enter the art contest without art materials? asked Grace. Maybe we can raise some money. We could have a bake sale, suggested Hal. I don't think there's time, Mrs. Simon said. Let's use the paper in the recycling bin, Pablo said. Pablo did not often raise his hand. He rarely spoke up, so everyone was surprised when he offered an idea. Hal said, I'm curious about your idea. I want to learn why you would use old paper. So we can save Earth's resources, replied Pablo. When we use recycled paper, we use natural materials and save trees. We can also use this old string and these wire hangers, added Grace. Now the class had to decide what to do with the materials. Pablo had another idea. We can fold the paper into cranes. Then we can attach the cranes to a frame to make a mobile. Mrs. Simon taught the children how to fold the paper into cranes. Then everyone helped attach the cranes to the mobile. On the day of the art contest, the paper crane mobile hung in the enormous community center room. The huge space was crowded with art projects. From far off, 
the class spotted their project. The crane mobile swayed gently as people walked past. From a distance, the paper cranes appeared to be softly flying. The judges checked each art project. They looked closely at the crane mobile. The paper crane mobile won the prize for the most creative use of materials. As the class proudly accepted their prize, they could not stop grinning. Grace exclaimed, We made our art project, and we saved the earth at the same time. Make connections. What do the children do at school to help protect the earth? Tell about a way you can help protect earth's resources at school. Okay, that takes us to the end of our stories for this week. We're going to talk about our comprehension strategy and skill. Now for our comprehension strategy, we're going to talk about making predictions. So when you're making a prediction about what happens in the story, you're guessing what you think is going to happen next. The way you're making that guess or the way that you're making that prediction is by using what already happened in the story. So you're taking all of the clues that the author has given you You've taken all the things that have happened so far to help you figure out what is going to happen next most likely. What do you think is going to happen based on what already what you already know in the story? And then for our, our comprehension skill, we're going to talk about problems and solutions. And that's when we're finding out what is the problem in a story? What do the characters have to do? What is the thing that they're trying to solve? And then the solution is how they solved it. Make predictions. Use what you already know and what you read in the story to predict what might happen next. Then you can confirm or revise your prediction. Find text evidence. On page 377 of the art project, I read that the class has no art materials. I predicted that they would ask kids to bring in the art materials. Then I read on to check my prediction. Hal said, I'm curious about your idea. I want to learn why you would use old paper. So we can save Earth's resources, replied Pablo. When we use recycled paper, we use natural materials and save trees. We can also use this old string and these wire hangers, added Grace. Now the class had to decide what to do with... I read that the kids thought they could use recycled materials. This made me revise my prediction. Problem and Solution The plot is often about the problem in the story. The solution is how the characters solve the problem by the end of the story. Find Text Evidence On page 377 of The Art Project, I learned the problem in the story. On page 378, I learned that Pablo suggested a step to solving the problem. Graphic Organizer Problem The class does not have art materials to make an art project. Steps to Solution Pablo suggests reusing paper from the recycling bin. Now we're going to go over our genre. So remember, a genre is the kind of story that you're reading. And our stories this week were fiction stories. And then we're going to briefly review homophones. And remember, those are words that sound the same, but have a different spelling and different meanings, depending on which way you're using it. Fiction. The art project is fiction. Fiction tells a story about imaginary characters and events, includes a problem and solution often includes dialogue. Find text evidence. I know that the art project is fiction. It tells a story that includes a problem and a solution. It also has dialogue. The characters talk to each other. Story structure. Dialogue is the words that the characters speak. The words are set inside quotation marks. Homophones. Homophones are words that sound the same, but have different spellings and different meanings. Find text evidence. When I read the sentence on page 377, 
I'm not sure what the word whole means. I know that whole, spelled H-O-L-E, means an empty space in something. Whole, spelled W-H-O-L-E, means entire. I think the second meaning makes sense. The whole class was disappointed. All right, that takes us through the end of our notes for this week. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing week. Take care. Bye-bye.